Hello, my name is Tyler Benson, and this is project number two, my clinical supervision. I completed the clinical supervision process with a third grade teacher at my school, Ms. Riley. I've had the, the opportunity to be Ms. Riley's mentor since the beginning of the year. Our first step was to complete a pre-observation conference where we decided what we would observe. We decided on four sweeps for level of engagement, which Ms. Riley targeted as a weakness of hers. We were to look at off-task engagement, off-task, engaged, and actively engaged. And our second thing to be observed was to observe transitions during the transition from small group to whole group. She wanted me to look for off-task behavior as well as time, as she felt like this was an area that was taking a lot of time in her instruction. Next, I completed the classroom observation. First thing I observed was the content. Ms. Riley was teaching figurative language to start her lesson and ending in a small group instruction where she, she was targeting student weaknesses based on NDBA scores. I was able to see two methods of instruction, her small group and her whole group, starting with the whole group for about 20 minutes, a five minute transitional time, and then about 20 minutes of small group instruction. I observed behaviors during all, through all aspects I saw on-task and off-task behavior, which was recorded in the charts following. In this chart, I looked at the level of, this is the collection of all my raw data. So I have the number of off-task students, engaged students, and active engagement for each task, broken down by the percentage. This chart did not glean a whole lot of information in Ms. Riley, other than realizing some of the percentages of engagement. On the contrary, these graphs really impacted Ms. Riley. There are two pie graphs broken down into both sweeps of the whole group compared to both sweeps in the small group, looking at the level of engagement and active engagement. The biggest thing Ms. Riley saw from this was the huge increase in active engagement for her small group lesson. This was one of the weaker parts of my project, looking at the information we gathered during the transition time. It showed us how long the transition happened and some of the off-task behaviors, but not as much information as we would have hoped. Ms. Riley and I both agreed that we would have liked to seen how the students were doing in between the first and the last. Were they closer to 40 seconds or closer to the two minutes and 30 seconds? We both agreed this would be something that we could target in the future with a better observation. During our post-observation conference, I led off by asking how she felt the lesson went. I could really feel how this empowered her from the beginning. One of the biggest things I also saw was her response to the data. When given the graphs and the tables, Ms. Riley was able to make her own conclusions and really learn a lot of the things that I would have hoped she would have learned. The biggest part of this would be my reflective question. Overall, I did not give much information other than a reflective question and some probing questions, which really pushed Ms. Riley to think on her own. My reflective question was, in the future, when planning whole group lessons and thinking about active engagement, how do you plan to actively engage students in the content? This really brought up a lot of great ideas from Ms. Riley, including uh, different styles of notes, uh, peer talking, group to group talking, small group talk during the whole group lesson. It really, I was able to really see her wheel spin during this time and think of improvements. During the post-conference analysis, one of the biggest things Ms. Riley told me was how encouraging it was, how encouraging the reflective question was to her, the reflective thinking, that she felt like this was more of a positive interaction between two professionals talking about the education rather than, compare, rather than an adult coming in or a, an administrator coming in and telling a teacher what to do. This is where she really talked about the power of the positivity which both made me feel better, I think, and made her feel better. Finally, for my reflection, I really felt like a facilitator of the learning, and I could really target that to how I felt about students as well, where I felt like I'm teaching these teachers how to improve, similar to how I teach students. And that all leads back to the impact of the relationship. I believe the relationship Ms. Riley and I had come lead had leading into this really helped what we were able to gain together. This concludes my clinical supervision, and this has been a process that I greatly adore, something that I plan to use in the future and something Ms. Riley and I have talked about using in the future through our mentorship program. Thank you.